Welcome to the Colibri project. I'm doing the information centering networking part one now for you. And the question, of course, is again, why do we talk about information centering networking? I hope you remember the introduction. Uh, we talked about the future internet and the requirements of future internet. I just repeat some of the motivation now for you. So if you look at networking today or the internet today, um, what we do is um, we, um, we mainly access um, content uh, we uh, download content, we have most of the traffic is done by, by video, we have a lot of mobility in the network. But if you look back, um, the network itself was um, designed and the protocols were um, specified already in the 60s, 70s and the early 80s. And it was mainly done um, to have an efficient resource sharing of computer centers. So the focus at that time was um, from where to get what, because we knew which computer center we wanted to access, which kind of um, program we wanted to run and where we get the results from. Mobility was not a point because computer centers were not mobile and the computers were much too large to be uh, moved around. And security was not a big issue because generally if you think about um, the main security reason was to get into the computer center and um, the lines were, were basically um, fixed lines somewhere in the ground, not that easy to access. If you look at today's networking, it completely changed. We have multi-interface devices. You have wireless LAN, um, 5G, 3G, 4G at your mobile phone. You have Bluetooth at your mobile phone. At home, you have DSL. You might have mobile as well. You might have cable networks. So it's completely different. You might have devices which have more than one interface. The speed of the links has much increased. We have... Um, tens or hundreds of megabits even at homes and also the devices have become much more complex, much more uh, powerful in means of processing. So the end devices as well as the core devices. If we look at today, I just mentioned that in the beginning we were looking for content, uh, mobility is an essential part of our network and we have to think about security due to the importance and the relevance of the internet communication for everything. So what we think about is um, we might want to have a new networking architecture that efficiently supports data sharing, mobility, and security. And this might not be uh, supported or provided by current internet architecture. So if you talk about information-centric network, uh, we change the paradigm. We go completely away from the conventional networking where we have a user and we have maybe the web server with the information and we have different routers and we access the web server via the routers and the routers define which path we want to go to the web server. In ICN, we just request some kind of information. So, um, and we, every router is a cache itself. So if the information was accessed before, it just remains on the cache for a certain time with a certain strategy. So we use the memory of the routers for caching the content and we secure the data itself and not the host. So the data has to be encrypted and verified rather than um, the web server or the end-to-end -end protocol. So if you compare the idea of the current internet with ICN, in current networks we have a sender and receiver. In information center networks we talk about content provider and content consumer. We con in the current internet we have a host-to-host -host communication and in information center network, we have a service access and we get information back or retrieve information. The topology and domain which you call, talk about in current internet is uh, more something like information scope in information center networking. The host name which we have on the main DD base, and so if you want to get some news from, C, uh, from BBC, for example, we would need to think about the BBC host name. If we think about information net, uh, content centering networking, we would think about the news item. So we have a data or content name, and we don't care where it is. And um, again, to security, I just mentioned that before, we have to secure the channel. So we use something like IPsec or any um, um, socket, uh, secure socket layer protocols to uh, secure the channel and um, authenticate the host. If you talk about information centering network, we need to check and, 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 uh, and um, provide integrity and trust um, on the data itself. So we basically have to assign data and we can uh, move the security issue from the content, uh, from the host to the content. So the advantages of ICN as we have it as ideas is we have a scalable and cost efficient data distribution. We use caching in all the routers. 
We have a persistent and unique naming. We ask and retrieve data based on the name on the, of the information name. It automatically supports mobility and multi roaming because um, you don't need to resolve the host name, you would just retrieve the information. You have a built-in security because you protect the data and not the host, and you have a tolerance against disruption because you can um, you only forward for the information. We have different ICN architectures um, in, in research and also in, in some implementation. Some is data, the first one is data-oriented network architectures. The second one, which I'm introducing, is a content-centric networking, mainly uh, provided by or proposed by Van Jacobson from Park. We have a publish subscribes internet routing paradigm, the PSRIRP, and we have the network information, the NetInt, which was also proposed by the uh, Forward project. Um, funded by the European Union. Okay, now it's time to uh, repeat things um, in a form of a quiz. <laughs> 